Yes, uh, we started in 2019. Uh, first interview, you won both the titles. Then 2021 was second. 2022 was third. At that point, it became a tradition. This time, it's the fourth time. And you won both the titles. What can we call it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what went wrong in um, 2021. <laughs> but um, I think it's a good tradition. This time, uh, somehow, like every time you won, there were so many emotions that were on your face. This time, it looked very, very calm. Was it like something that happened easily for you? I would say that um, the rapid tournament was um, less dramatic than, than usual. Um, I mean, there were, there were obviously moments like when I was, um, when I blundered against Keimer and I had to fight for the draw. And obviously Vidit could have caught me if he, um, uh, if he won the penultimate round. But in, yeah, uh, I think it was about us. Um, you know, calm, uh, an emotional ride as I could have, could have hoped. I would say the blitz was um, different. The blitz, blitz was tough. Like maybe the reason why I didn't show emotion was that I was just too, too tired. Uh, I felt like I was running on adrenaline the whole, um, the whole day. So that was definitely the, um, um, the harder part. Yeah. For me, one of the best things is to follow your games and there were few games which I wanted to just talk about. I think in the rapid, what stood out was your win against Fedosiev. It was just tremendous play. Uh, in fact, this entire concept with King D8, King C7 is well known in the Nimzo. But the way in which you, you played, I think it was phenomenal. Are you also happy with that win? I was very happy with uh, several things about the Fedosiev game. Obviously, I think I played a um, fairly high quality uh, game for, for Rapid. Um, most of all, I was very happy with my mentality. Uh, I was quite upset at the end of uh, day two since I, I felt that I'd really wasted a chance to, um, to pull a little bit ahead of the field. After I beat Vidit, I have five and a half out of six um, and most probably two white games out of three coming up. So I felt that the chance to get to seven and a half or even eight out of nine were were there and going into the uh, going into the last game uh, last day with a difficult black game and knowing that I probably had to win if I drew that and I probably had to win two of the last uh, three games I wasn't really comfortable and so I just got the inspiration over the board that when he played knight of three I thought um, um, yeah let's Let's fight, you know, um, and uh, yeah, it really, it really worked out. It really worked out well, and um, I have to say also, like my mindset, um, my yeah, uh, uh, as I said, like I was really happy with my mindset going into the, into the last day. It was sunny outside. I was feeling feeling good, good energy, and um, um, I told my dad like. I feel good, so when I feel good, I never lose, or almost never lose. So it was, um, that was part of the, the reason why I, I chose the, the line that I, I played. I thought, yeah, as long as I'm on my game, even if we have a complicated fight, I should not, should not be risking, risking that much. But um, yeah, definitely. I, I, I think, like, overall, my play in this tournament was, not rarely brilliant. Um, it was more about grinding out wins, getting the most of the positions that I had. But yeah, that one certainly stood out as um, as a special moment from from this championship. Absolutely. And uh, going to the blitz event, uh, I think day one was quite good. But all the action was on day two. I really loved some of the things. But on day one, there were a few moments like you missing this bishop e4 in that game against uh, Shamshidin, I think you, you would have lost an exchange, I guess, and also Bishop C5. Against uh, Yahongir, yeah? Wachidov. Yeah. Yeah, Wachidov. Um, no, uh, 
Rukech B8 you played. Yeah, yeah that was against. Um, actually, I was in trouble Martin against yes. um, Shamshidin as well. Yes. So, um, yeah, um, I was um, somehow didn't sleep so well before the um, um, before the first day of blitz. Um, I was just tossing and turning and couldn't couldn't sleep for whatever reason. So. Um, that day was, um, yeah, I was struggling. I was missing a lot of things. Um, I would say that I didn't, I didn't have a single, like, objectively bad position, I think, in the rapid, but in the blitz, they were, they were coming almost every game. So, um, the first day was really all about, really all about survival, um, and, um, yeah, I mean, coming out of, of that one with um, with a shared lead was obviously huge. And then when you came to the second day today, you lost the first game itself against MVL. I think you just played bishop e7 instead of a6 and after that the game was so tough. Yeah, um, I was feeling a bit better today. Not like energetic, but fairly calm. And then I was apparently too calm because I, I just fell asleep in the opening. Um, I mean, usually, like when you make a mistake early, like you can sort of fight back. But I just didn't have any chances whatsoever after after that. So um, yeah, it was <laughs> was a bit uh, was a bit silly for sure. And then you faced Sarana, and with Sarana, you had lost last time at World Blitz. So he was already a, not an easy opponent. But the way in which again you played, I think you know you sacked. You first played rook a4, rook b4, and when you took on b7, it reminded me of this Kasparov game. I don't know if you, you yeah, which hero, yeah, yeah. and I thought you will play b4, but okay, there was e5. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I mean, it's fairly typical when black goes for an early b5 that you... The uh, b7 bishop is really the key for black to holding everything together, so you're um, this idea with rook b4, rook b4 was quite thematic. I think after that, you know, we both made a bunch of mistakes. I was, I was definitely, definitely still shaky. Um, and it was the same with the game against Arjun next. Um, I mean, it was complicated, then I was outplaying him a bit. Then I won a pawn and I got a completely winning endgame. And um, he started to fight well and then it was just a total, total mess. So. Um, I think those games were quite typical of the day that I ha that I had today. That yeah, I, I I mean I just won by sheer will more more than anything else. But I really loved the game with you, Yangi. I mean the the this idea of rook d4, c4. Sorry, first a4, then c4, and you played it without much thought. Like you played it with once. I mean that was insane. Um, yeah, it's quite typical though that when you have. There's far advanced uh, pass pawn that, yeah, you just have to um, to do everything um, in order to uh, in order to push it forward. And besides, he hadn't uh, made it luft for his king, which always like tells you that there may be um, uh, there may be chances for uh, for tactics. Um, but um, I, I think the thing I was most happy about in that game was early on. Um, when um, I, I thought for a long time, like longer than you usually should think in, in Blitz, and I needed some time to evaluate the position with... Um, knight c6, right? Yeah, knight c6, and the position we eventually get with uh, two bishops against two knights. Because at first my thought was, well, that can't be any good. Um, his knights are... His knights are active and my pawns are weak, but I realized after a while that it was a lot more interesting for white than, than I, I thought at first. Um, so I was happy with that. Then uh, later I made a bit of a rash decision to exchange the bishop for the knight, because um, I'd only counted on him exchanging the queens when I thought, basically, um, oh, never mind, I had c7 after, no, otherwise. But, yeah, bishop d6, c7. Yeah, c7. I had c7. Ah, right. 
Yeah, never mind that. No, but Quincy 7, Bishop 8, would that be compensation? Yeah, some compensation, but still much better for White. Yeah, okay, never mind. Uh, I, w I was thinking during the game that he missed a chance by not taking CD6. Um, because, yeah, then my intuition was right that, of course, that's why I had queen takes d6 in my mind. Yeah, anyway, after that, it was um, it was all like move by move tactics, but I would say uh, when you're not, when your mind is not too sharp, but you're sort of, uh, but you're sort of playing by adrenaline as I was today, those kinds of tactics are the easiest ones. When you can play sort of with flow and and everything is forced, that's the easy way to play. The thing that I found much harder today are the positions where um, where not that much is going on, like the game against Murzin. Like my play was very uncertain in these strategic games, but when when it's also against Rapport, I would say. I mean, certainly there were mistakes made, but like everything was forcing. So then that I could that I could do quite quite reasonably today. And even against players like Arjun, who are you know young and very sharp, you are able to outwit them in the sort of time trap, like sort of that phase, which which itself is not at all easy, right? They are like these youngsters are very very sharp in time trouble. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think probably Nihal is the one who stands out for playing extremely well with just uh, just a few seconds. Um, but um, yeah, Arjun is also extremely extremely resourceful, so he's, he's hard to um, hard to put away. And then in the last round, uh, were you under a bit of a stress that you were facing Levon and this black color, or you thought it was all okay? Yeah, I. I was just confused about the um, pairings, and I understand the rule. Uh, now I just think it's not logical. Um, but uh, no, I mean, in my mind, like looking at the other games, like already for several minutes, I'd sort of been in my mind prepared that uh, I got white against Levon in the last round, and uh, then I saw the pairings, and I was suddenly I'm black. What the hell is this? Um, so yeah, I was certainly certainly stressed. Obviously, it's not ideal to spend energy on, on that before you play an important game. Um, but uh, yeah, the game in itself was was okay. Actually, maybe the the few minutes where the arbiters were checking everything was helping me because it maybe just you know sit there, calm down a little bit, and it was fine. You've won, uh, you've defended both your titles uh, now for the fourth time, actually. You did it in 2014, 19, 22, and 23. Uh, this must be a very, very nice feeling, right, for you, because I think World Rapid and Blitz is something you love to play. I do love to play the World Rapid and Blitz. Um, and um, to be honest, like I, I shouldn't complain about anything, but I was hoping to enjoy the Blitz even more. Because um, I feel like Rapid is usually the stressful part, and then the Blitz is more fun. But this time, certainly, the Blitz was not fun. It was just very, it was just very difficult and, 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 and stressful. But overall, yeah, these tournaments mean a lot to me. And, um, I definitely, um, yeah, definitely enjoy the challenge. And 17th title, uh, world title. I mean, it's so similar to something like, let's say, Federer winning Grand Slams or... Uh, well, well, there are, there are only, um, only a maximum of three titles you can win a year in chess and there are four titles in, in tennis. So. <laughs> um, but I think this means that I've won more than half the Rapid and Blitz championships since they were uh, um, since they started to hold them in uh, 20, 2014, like when they sort of gained their uh, prestige. So it's, that's um, something that's very dear to me for sure. That that's huge. And what does twenty twenty four hold for you? Because you are going to play Chess nine sixty classical in the first. I think in February, which is actually uh, something that you've always wanted to do. Um, yeah, I, I will not be playing too much chess, um, at least at the start of um, 
2024. I haven't like I've played so much this year, especially the la the second half of the year. But you're right. The one that I do play is one that I look forward to a lot. We have an amazing field in in Germany, um, very uh, very strong and also like all very fighting players. And uh, yeah, to get the chance to play Fisher Fisher Random Classic is. Um, yeah, it's definitely something I've been looking forward to for um, for a long time. So um, yeah, that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be a ma massive goal for me um, next year, and um, I hope that um, you know it will be a great experience and that we will see more of it. Everyone will miss you at Waikanze. I mean, you've been always <laughs> after here. You go to Waikanze generally in a week's time or so. Yeah. Um, Obviously, it's not it's not easy for me to to skip Vikings since I've played it so many so many years. But I, I did feel this time that I've simply played a little bit too much, and that I need I need some some break. And I, I want to ask you lastly about you know what what is happening with you in general about the World Championship cycle because you are not playing. Ding is not. Uh, playing much, you know, he's the world champion. Now the candidates will happen and it's going on. Uh, it feels something is missing, you know, in the entire cycle. Uh. I would say at the moment it's not my, it's not my problem, so. Um, uh, I, I know that uh, the world championship is very important both to a lot of players and Fans, I mean the classical world championship, um, but yeah, for the moment I'm not trying to change anything, nor am I playing the playing the candidates. So, um, I mean, you are right that it's 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 a shame that the world champion is not playing and uh, that the best player in the world is not playing in the world in classical world championship, but. Yeah, apart from chess, is there anything else that is on your mind in 2024? Um, improve. I would like to improve my golf game in golf. Tw in 2024. Um, <laughs> but apart from that, I don't know. I mean, you played in Qatar. I think we saw the pictures. Or was it Qatar or some other? Yeah, place? I was playing in. Um, Baku. I was playing ah, yes. a bit in Baku and uh, in in Qatar as well. Yeah. So, but apart from that, you know, life is good. Magnus, thank you so much for giving this time to us and also uh, playing so well. It's an absolute pleasure to watch your games live and I hope you keep playing. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, we just had our uh, traditional interview, so... Uh, Happy New Year and uh, see you at some, some chess tournaments. Wow, I missed it. I missed you winning both the events. This is my favorite tournament. And you played so well. Thank you. 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 Thank you.